Hey folks, uh, today I want to tell you about one of the games that inspired paper computer games, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. This is an incredible game and so much about it led Chris to create paper computer games in the first place, and games like this just aren't made anymore. This isn't just a review and retrospective of the game itself, I'll also show you which aspects of paper computer games grew out of this game. You don't have to have seen the Indiana Jones movies to play this game. In fact, as a fan of the movies, I might actually like the game better than the movies. Indiana Jones is a part of a genre of games called the point-and-click adventure game. Point-and-clicks were big in the early 90s, and then they died out completely. People do still make them, but basically only as indie games. Point-and-clicks weren't about fighting enemies. They were basically all puzzles. But they had a lot of characters to talk to, and usually a good sense of humor. I want a reading with Miss Hapgood. Are you crazy? During the show? Write a letter. And an intriguing story to tie it all together. Basically, you would control Indiana Jones by clicking where you want him to go, and if you wanted him to do something, you had a list of verbs you could click on. For example, if you want Indy to push something, you would click push, and then click on the thing you wanted him to push. Indy also has an inventory because you can pick up items along the way. And if that sounds just like paper computer games, that's because it is just like paper computer games. The way PCGs are played was basically designed after this basic system. PCGs really are basically just point and clicks on paper. Now, later on, PCGs were adapted to more game genres. For example, I have a video on here about how to make a paper computer game first person shooter. But even those games are still built on the same basic way to play. You say what you're going to try to do, and we tell you what happens. We've changed the style, but the whole idea of paper computer games is still the same, and it still comes largely from Indiana Jones. In the game, you have to travel all around the world looking for clues left behind by an ancient civilization. Your partner, Sophia Hapgood, is into the paranormal, and she believes that these artifacts were all left behind by the lost city of Atlantis. Indiana Jones doesn't believe it, but he can see there's something weird going on with these weird artifacts, so he'll investigate. Nazi scientists, meanwhile, think they can use the incredible power of these ancient artifacts to take over the world. So we have to find Atlantis before they do. Now, in case you don't know what Atlantis is, in real life, it's a legendary civilization that was extremely advanced, a perfect society, before it sank beneath the waves. Take it easy and watch the show. Here, my friends, is Atlantis. As it might have appeared in its heyday. Glorious, prosperous, socially and technically advanced. Beyond our wildest dreams. 5,000 years ago, while everyone else still wore animal skins, the mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. Centuries later, the famous philosopher Plato wrote about it. He placed Atlantis on a continent out in the deep ocean and described how it was divided into three circular parts. Shh! She's just coming to the exciting part. What befell the serene city? We may never know for sure. Was it the sea level slowly creeping higher? or the earth itself suddenly shifting. However it happened, panic must have gripped the citizens. On that fateful day when proud Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Or, perhaps it was a volcanic eruption and something remains even now. On some questions, the great spirit who guides my thoughts the all-seeing Nurab Sal is silent. I've been through this a hundred times. The woman never stops. 
The root premise of this narrative is that back in the old days, the gods divvied up the world, and while Athena got the region of Athens, Poseidon got the island of Atlantis, a huge, beautiful, resource-rich island nation with everything a budding civilization could ask for. The island is described as being bigger than Libya and Anatolia combined, which, judging by the size of modern-day Anatolia, makes it bigger than Texas, but not by much. There, Poseidon fell in love with a mortal woman, Cleto, and they had a whole bunch of kids. Unfortunately, it probably never really existed. Modern historians think it was basically just a thought experiment by Plato, and even he probably never thought it was a real place. But nonetheless, Atlantis continues to exist in our pop culture. We've seen it in the Aquaman movie, in the TV series Stargate Atlantis, and there's even a Disney movie about the lost city. After playing Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Chris and I just got obsessed with Atlantis and with finding the real Atlantis when we were kids. We watched TV documentaries about it, we read books about it, we talked to each other and speculated where it could be, and of course, Atlantis made its way into paper computer games. Unfortunately, I can't show any pictures of this because most of Chris's PCGs from when he was a kid got thrown out, but basically, the game starred Zack, like all of Chris's games at the time, and he had to once again race the Nazis to Atlantis, except this time there was an entrance to Atlantis beneath the sewers. That's how you got to Atlantis in the PCG. For some reason you had to you had to go back through the sewers. We don't remember many details from that game, so hopefully someday someone will make a sequel, a return to Atlantis in the PCG universe. The Nazis also made their way into BCGs. Okay, so Nazis are a real group, of course, but it was this game that put them into our imaginations as a group of villains. The main villain group in Chris's original PCGs was an evil corporation that was just called The Company, but the Nazis were also a regular presence, trying to foil Zack's adventures. So much so that it was weird that when they weren't included in my giant PCG, Balzac Lobotron, as part of the Alliance. The Alliance is an alliance of all the evil organizations that exist in, in the PCG universe. Now Indy's partner, Sophia, was always a bit salty, always butting heads with Indy, and they would make sarcastic remarks at each other. Cold enough for you? Even colder than my feelings towards you, Jones. Even if ultimately there ends up being a romance between them. That would partially inspire the character of Colette, who would sometimes accompany Zack on some of his adventures, which is a bit weird because Colette is a real person and her personality wasn't like that, but... I mean, hey, we were kids, what do you want? There are PCGs inspired by individual scenes from Indiana Jones. Like Chris's game Relics of the Sea has Zack sneaking aboard a Nazi submarine to discover an ancient secret at the bottom of the ocean, much like Indy does here. The game fleshes out that idea to make it into a whole game. By the way, that game is available on the PCG shop, link in the description. I was really taken with the way Atlantis looks in the game, with all this lava-based technology, the giant statues with lava flowing out of their mouths. So, in my PCG, Fried Calamari, the area called the Forge, under an ancient citadel on the planet Shri, is based on that. A pit of lava, with it being forged into incredible things. Only I took it further, the creatures called Constructs have some of that lava built into them. This whole citadel has a very Atlantis vibe, even if its story is very different. And while I was playing the game with Ari, I played music from Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis in the background because it fits the game perfectly, and come on, it's just amazing music, that's basically what you've been hearing this whole video. <laughs> it's impossible to quantify just how much of this game has made it into paper computer games somewhere or other. Puzzles, ideas, tech, objects, and so on. One time as a kid, I even started making a PCG version of Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, which would have been exactly the same, but on paper. I only made it a few pages in, I was literally just copying the screens from Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. I also made a separate Indiana Jones game with a new story, but it was only like a page long. Both games are lost. Now, PCGs are not just a paper version of Indiana Jones. That was one major inspiration for them, and there are other inspirations. But it's only a starting point, a source of ideas. 
And there are so, so many more ideas built on those ideas by many different PCG creators, some of whom have never even played Indiana Jones. Nonetheless, it's great to revisit this amazing game and honor it for all it's contributed to paper computer games. If you want to try the game and get some inspiration from it yourself, it's now available online and I've put a link in the description. Thanks for watching folks, that's all I've got to show you for today, but, if, but let me know if you guys like this video and I could make videos on some of the other computer games that have also contributed to paper computer games through inspiration. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching folks.